Hi, it's Chris Klein, director of Butterfly Ridge Butterfly Conservation Center. And today we're going to have episode three of Landscaping for Life. And today our emphasis is on how to prepare your seeds of native plants to uh, give you the best chances that they'll grow in the spring. Um, with seeds, they, they have, most seeds here in, in central and southeast Ohio have to go through a period of cold, wet weather in order to break dormancy. Now there's several different ways you can accomplish that. You can just prepare your bed in the fall, throw your seeds out and let winter winterize them. And I realize that's how nature does it, but unfortunately the way nature is designed by design, many of those seeds are supposed to be eaten by mice and birds and other creatures that are out moving around in the wintertime. Um, so my hunch is, is you would rather those seeds that you worked hard to collect, um, you would rather they grow up into plants rather than become food for a bird or something. And so there are different techniques to, uh, to go through that winterization process. Technically, it's known as stratification, that cool, wet uh, period in order to get the seeds to break dormancy. Here at Butterfly Ridge, how we break dormancy, how we stratify, is we take those seeds and we put them in the refrigerator and we let them spend the winter in the refrigerator Okay, where they're safe from birds and mice and different creatures wanting to eat them. So that way in the spring, we're able to sow those seeds and, and we end up with 100 plants rather than two plants and a bunch of fat mice. So, um, now one issue that you kind of have to keep in mind, there, there's like a timing issue with all of this. And so for example, if your plan is to, to sow your seed in the summer or late spring, you know, af after we get past that, that frost date, which in our neighborhood I think is like May 15. So if you're just planning on sprinkling them on the ground, sprinkling them into a prepared bed after May 15, then you actually don't want to start your stratification process until probably more like March 1st or so. Now here at Butterfly Ridge, we actually grow our seed in, uh, we have two like hoop greenhouses and each greenhouse has a portable solar generator attached that we can run heat mats and whatnot off of. And so we actually start our seed, we plant our seed um, in seed flats, usually around Valentine's Day, which means we have to have our stratification done by Valentine's Day. So we've actually, let's see, this is like December 14th or something. Um, we've actually had seeds in the refrigerator now. Uh, some of them have been in the refrigerator close to a month and a half already. And cause that's because we're gonna be sowing the seeds pretty early. And so once again, you have to kind of think about that whole timing too. Now realize there are other options as far as planting. If you don't have greenhouses at home, uh, you don't want to wait until after May 15 to get your, your, your seeds germinating. Um, I mean, you can easily germinate seeds, you know, in the windowsill in the kitchen there as well. So, you know, there's different ways to do it and, and I'm sure you'll work out what's uh, best for you. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the technique that we use as far as stratifying seeds okay so we've got all of our materials here um, what we're going to be planting is poke milkweed it's a milkweed that actually prefers uh, growing in like a partial shade environment so we've already planted quite a bit here at butterfly ridge uh, we typically plant it in our little woodland openings that we make. We typically plant it kind of next to the, the tree line there, so it spends most of its time in the shade. So the poke milkweed is what we're going to be uh, planting here. Um, actually stratifying, that's a more correct term. Now, first order of business, our Ziploc bag, we need to label. And so we put the name 
of our plant that we are stratifying. And then we write the date that we're going to be putting it in the refrigerator. Uh, so that today's date is the 14th, I think, 2018. Then we also write the date that it's supposed to come out of the refrigerator. Um, the reason we do that is, for example, here at Butterfly Ridge, we'll have 15, 20 of these Ziploc bags in the refrigerator. And that's just too much for one guy to, to rely on his memory to, to, to keep track of. So what we do is we put all this information on the bag. That way we don't have to remember it. Now, most of our seeds here in central and southeast Ohio require a 60-day stratification. That's a minimum of 60 days. So our out date will be February 14 of 2019. Um, we don't have to necessarily take it out on February 14. We just need to make sure it stays in the refrigerator at least as long as February 14th. Now, what we do, we take our paper towel and we are going to fold our paper towel in half. Open up our bag. And we're going to drop our paper towel in so that the little opening here is facing out. Sort of like so. There we go. Now, we take our packet of seeds. Oops, sorry, I have already lost one here. Okay, and we pour our seeds into the inside of the paper towel. So it looks sort of like so. Okay, now, got water. And we're going to add just enough water just to barely make the paper towel damp. Okay, we don't want it soggy wet. We just want it damp. In fact, that right there is probably going to be just fine once that soaks across. And so we will fold that up, let that finish soaking, and Voila, that's about it. Like I said, it's not rocket science by any stretch. Um, and then once I get home, I'll stick that in the refrigerator and we'll be good to go. Now, with not, not all seeds, is it quite that simple? And I brought an example here with me. Uh, these are Angelica seeds. They're a member of the carrot family. Um, and you'll note, look at all these dates I have written on here. And that is because Angelica actually requires a double stratification. So for those seeds to germinate, it has to, has to actually go through two winters. And so my initial date that I put it in on September 10, the date that I took it out, which is November 20th, it'll stay out in my kitchen okay until february 1st in which case it goes back in again into the refrigerator and then it'll come out for the final time of april 1st and once again that's because this particular species requires two winters to break dormancy another thing you'll notice with this one and i tend to do this with larger seeds um, i'm using like a pea gravel sand mix instead of the paper towel um, one thing with using the paper towel is you kind of have to keep an eye on it because it will mold. And so you have to check it every couple, two or three weeks. Uh, whereas with the sand and the gravel, you don't have to worry about that quite so much. It tends to not mold on you. And so once again, that's all there is to the, the stratification process. Now, as I mentioned, most seeds here in central and southeast Ohio and probably safe to say throughout the Great Lakes and Midwest. Most seeds require a 60 day stratification period. That means they have to be in the refrigerator for at least 60 days. Now I'll be honest with you, with me, I like to get that stuff done early so I don't have to think about it anymore. 
and lots of times our seeds end up in the refrigerator for three or four months. Okay, I'll let you do the math on that one, but it's a whole lot longer than 60 days. Um, going over that 60 day time frame, not a problem. The problem is if you go under the 60 day time frame, so you wanna be careful about that. Also, while most seeds in Ohio require 60 days, there are some seeds that have much longer stratification periods. So for example, pawpaw trees, if you're trying to grow pawpaw from seed, they actually have something like a 120 day stratification period. Um, so what is that doing the math? It's like four months or something. Um, some of the members of the carrot family, um, that Angelica I showed you is a member of that family. Uh, for example, I think it's uh, Golden Alexanders, there we go. Um, I think they have a like 105 day stratification period. So um, you kind of need to research that, make sure you've got the right, uh, right data. Now, how you can get that data, and of course you can get it from us. Uh, we've got a little chart we put together that shows the stratification periods for all, all the different kinds of native, native plant seed that we offer. Um, also, if you go online to uh, Prairie Moon Nursery, to their website, and you type in, in their little search block, you type in um, the name of the plant that you're wanting to grow seed of, you'll get a, the page will come up for that plant and they will actually give you all the details involved in, in uh, making sure that that seed germinates. You know, whether the seed needs stratification, whether it needs scarification, which is where you have to actually scratch off the seed coat. Not many things in Ohio that have that requirement. Um, that's much more of a southwestern uh, United States issue. Some of the bean family members have seed coats that are super thick and you have to actually use files and saws to break through that seed coat. Uh, once again, here in Ohio, very, very few things that have to be scarified. Um, you know, on that Prairie Moon site, we'll also discuss, you know, do you have to actually cover the seeds to get them to grow? Because some of the really tiny seeds like, uh, oh, like Cardinal Flower, um, while wow, bergamot, you don't hardly even have to cover the seeds. Uh, so that Prairie Moon website, they, they give you all those details as well. Realize not all seed actually has to be stratified. For example, most of your native grasses, that seed doesn't have to be stratified at all. Um, so in spring, whenever you're ready to plant it, it's, it's pretty much good to go. And so uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas as far as, you know, being able to plan out, work out that timing as far as growing things from seed. Uh, like I said, of the 4,000 plants that, that we've planted here at Butterfly Ridge, oh boy, more than 3,900 of them we've actually started from seed. They look great. So it, it's not as, as hard as it may sound. Um, I hope you'll join me next week for episode four. Uh, and in that episode, we'll talk a little bit more about why to use native plants. I mean, we've talked a lot about what a native plant is, um, how to pick good native plants to, to keep your butterflies happy and other pollinators. We haven't really hit as hard as I would like on the why you use native plants. And so that'll be our... Uh, That'll be our topic of discussion with week four, with episode four. So we'll see you then. Bye.